Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. Today let's get back into some software engineering and let's talk about ways to manage your UIs and dialogues in your games. Because like everything else in software engineering, you can go either super simple or you can spend years making the most complicated and out of this world architecture for managing simple UI and dialogues. Now, personally, I really like the way Godot handles nodes and controls and stuff for UIs, but I'm not here to teach you about how to use anchor points and all that. I assume you already have a bunch of menus and you're just coming to trying to figure out the best way of making them visible and visible depending on the user input. To do this, I thought I'd show you a couple of examples. Here I've made the most amazing green game the world has ever seen. You have a nice little bean, you can jump around, you can move. And I've made this pause menu that I want to show when the player hit escape. So how am I going to do that? Well, if I was making the most basic interface the world has ever seen, it'd be pretty simple. I just have to go into my project setting, go into the input map and add a new input called, for example, main menu, add this. And then I want to uh, click on the little plus button and bind the escape key, for example, to my action so that I can go into my player controller and add the input function and do if input dot is action just pressed main menu. Okay. I want to show my pause menu and good is awesome like that. You can just drag and drop your node into the a script and it's automatically going to create a reference to it so I can do visible equal true and now we can test that in the game by hitting play now I still have my character I can still move around and if I hit escape the menu shows up awesome of course this is not going to be enough if you have a really complicated game with lots of menus this is especially true if you have something like an RPG game with like skill trees and you know quest logs and inventory management and all that or if you're making a mobile game and you want to have in-app purchase you're gonna end up with like menus going all the way to the center of the earth so you're probably gonna want some kind of centralized place to manage all of those dialogues and this is usually done with something called a stack a stack is just a simple data structure in software engineering where the last element that came in is the first element that comes out. This is just so that when you have multiple menus that have to show on top of each other, you know which one should be hidden and should which one you should remake visible. For example, if you have like five menu deep or something and you remove one of the menu, then the next one is the previous one that was visible and so on. It's really simple and you could quite easily do it with just having a list of the active menus in an autoload somewhere, which is just a static object that is always available from everywhere in your game. But personally, I don't really like using autoload for this kind of stuff because when you change a scene, the autoload doesn't refresh, which means you have to remember to clean it up because if you had like menus popped up in your list and you change scene, then all those menus should be cleaned up, should be deleted and whatever, and it can create a whole mess. Plus, um, it's a lot of manual work for each dialogue to have to check what's the parent and stuff. You can add methods to simplify things a little bit, but I still feel it's kind of icky. And that's why for my game Solar Rogue, I came up with a pretty nifty way of managing dialogues that I thought I would show you today. So here's the structure. I have a UI manager root node and all my dialogues like the inventory dialogue or the confirm dialogue, they extend a class called the UI managed. Now, most interaction with my whole UI system is handled by three global signals. Yes, this is a popular way of doing communication in Godot where you declare a bunch of signal in an autoload. And I know I said I don't like autoloads, but in this case, I think it's fine because the signals are not really persistent. They don't really have a state. So when you change scene, you don't have to worry about them. And the idea is that you can connect and emit signal from anywhere in your game because of those autoload. It's called an event bus. Now for my UI, I have three global signal, on GUI loaded, on push GUI, and on pop GUI. Now the idea is that my UI manager listened to on GUI created, which is emitted in the ready method of my UI manage. 
That means that any of my classes that extends this UI manage is automatically going to be registered to the UI manager through this on ready method. So that means that after that, from anywhere in the game, for example, the player controller, I can emit this on push UI with the name of the UI, for example, inventory UI. And then it, the UI manager is going to get that, look into its list of available UI, find the UI I want, and automatically make it visible. Now, the neat part with this is that beside passing the name of the dialogue I want to show in my on push GUI, I have an optional array of parameter I can pass as initialization for my dialogues. The way it works is that the UI manage has a method in it. Um, initially, it does nothing, but it can be extended by all my dialogues to process the parameters I pass when I make the dialogue visible. So that means that, for example, in my inventory dialog, I can pass as a parameter the player node so that the inventory knows how to, what items to show by looking up the inventory in the user. But it's even more powerful than that because I can also, for example, pass just a list of item. And then that means that I can reuse the same dialog, for example, the NPC inventory or a chess content or whatever. And it's super, super flexible. Now, I want to go back to the example from before, because as you can see, I have my UI manager here, and it's listening to this on GUI loaded, on push GUI, and on pop GUI. And if you look, my repose menu has a script attached to it, which extends this UI managed. And if we go look at the UI manage, you'll see, like I was saying, that in the ready, I emit on my event bus the on GUI loaded by passing the name of this um, dialog, which is the pause menu, which is called pause. And it passes itself so that when we go back into the UI manager, we can see that on GUI loaded callback, if it's not already in the dictionary, I um, add this and I even make it invisible so that I know that my UIs by default are always hidden. Now we can go back into the player controller and where I was using the input before and just directly setting the uh, pause menu visible. Instead, I can do like I was saying, call my event bus dot emit signal and then on push GUI. And like I said, my menu is called pause. And like I said, I can pass parameter. In this case, I don't need to pass any parameter, so I can just do like this. And now if I hit play and I move around and I hit escape, you see that the menu also showed up. The idea is that when I want to hide it, I don't even need to tell the game what I want to hide. It always knows that the thing that it has to hide is the menu that's on the top of the stack. So for example, when I go into my pause menu, if I want to hide my menu, when I click the quit button, I can go here and I, on the quit event, I can just say on pop GUI. And then the UI manager is going to uh, catch that event, look at the stack. It's going to take the topmost dialogue from the stack and hide it. Um, just to show that it works, I can do escape, show the menu. And when I click the quit button, it hides. And it's just that easy. So you might think that this is a little bit overcomplicated for such a simple use case, but we can jump into one of my uh, slightly more complicated prototype I made where I have already a bunch of dialogues and menus. And for example, I have this crafting dialogue where I have a drop button where you can discard items from your inventory. But when the user does that, I want to show a dialogue uh, asking, are you sure? And one of the problem with the way I showed you is like, how do my crafting dialogue knows that I answered yes or no in the confirm dialogue, because they're two separate scenes, right? And they always talk through events. So it's not always obvious. Well, I have a pretty clever trick for that. If you look in the um, on button press, when you want to drop something, I do my on push GUI, I call my confirm dialogue. But as the um, init parameter for my dialog, I pass a callback object, which is the crafting dialog, and a callback method that says do drop. And what happened is that I have this generic confirm dialog that I can show you here. It just says, are you sure? Confirm, cancel. And what happened in there 
is that in the init, I remember the callback object and the callback method. I can even pass an optional text parameter if I want to show some different text for the confirm dialog. And when you click the OK button, like the unconfirm button, I say, well, call the callback and then close yourself. So that means that back in my craft dialog, if you remember, the callback method was do drop, which is the method that's just here. And what's going to happen is when the do drop gets called, it's going to actually get rid of the inventory. This is a really neat little way of uh, talking back to some other objects that invoked the dialog. And um, if you want to test it out, we can start the game like this. And then I can go into my inventory and you can see that, for example, I have a hundred ingot. I choose that. I click the drop button. It's going to say, are you sure you want to drop iron ingot a hundred? You do confirm. And as you can see, the items dropped and you can see how simple it was. It's just an unpush on pop. And that's about it. Now, if we want to go another level, I can show you a little bit in um, solar rogue. I actually had to create a lot of code in my UI manager to manage stuff like transition, um, to manage things like, um, is the animation finished? Is the menus are locked? If the game is paused is, you know, and all of this can be managed centrally in the UI manager. So I know that when I fix it in one place, I'm never going to have to fix it somewhere else. And for example, in Solar Rogue, my transition effect between menu is actually pretty complicated because it's a post effect that I have um, just here. You see, I have this render viewport and what happened is when a menu has to hide or show, it temporarily gets assigned to this viewport. So for example, I have this menu here that I moved into this post effect and my UI manager is not just doing like a fade in or a tween or whatever. It's actually has a man animation manager. And as you can see, if I move it, you'll see the post effect getting applied to just this menu. And that's how, you know, my UI manager in solar rogue is, you know, several hundred lines of code. And it also manages a, some inputs, some shortcuts and stuff like that. Who's got focused who lose focuses so that, you know, if you hit the shortcut, it doesn't affect like a menu that's disabled or out of focus and stuff like that. And as you can see, it's super flexible. So I hope I showed you like how you can go from something super basic that you might want to implement in like a game jam to how you can use this to make it more and more and more complicated, more and more fancy. Another thing I did in a project, I can't sadly show you is I wanted to have dockable elements, kind of like the inspector in uh, Godot, where you have these elements that you can add and remove from the side of the inspector. And I was wondering how to manage this. And I figured I could actually use my UI manager. The only difference is that instead of a dialogue where you can only ever have one dialogue that's active in the stack, um, here in the uh, side dock, I can have multiple components visible at the same time. But the only change I had to do is that when you do unpush GUI, I have to make sure that if it's a dockable component, it doesn't get added to the stack, which means that when I want to hide it, instead of doing on pop GUI without any argument, I have an optional name of the dock you want to hide and it still just works. And it will have all the gizmos, all the transition and everything that my normal dialogues have. I can even have multiple animation and I can pass like which transition I want, for example, as another parameter to unpush GUI. So if I wanted to have like a really special pop in animation or something, I can, you know, manage this with the animation player and the parameters to my unpush GUI, unpop GUI and so on. And so I hope I convince you that this is a pretty good way of organizing your dialogue. And if you have another way or a better way of doing it, please leave a comment below and see you all in my next episode. Bye.